Welcome back guys. So picking up just where we left off in the last video, I'm gonna show you how to set up all the essential accounts to get started. So we're gonna to need to set up your Google account, your Google Ads account, or previously called Google AdWords, which a lot of people might remember it as, and your Google Merchant Center account, which is where your Google feed is gonna be housed, and that's gonna to talk together with AdWords uh, in order to get this whole process up and rolling and get your ads out there. So let's get on into it. Okay, so to create a Google account, if you have a Gmail or anything like that, you've already got a Google account. So if you do have this already, you can skip to the next step and go straight to Google Ads. So feel free to do that if you need to, but I'll quickly show you here, create your Google account. So you just enter all the relevant info here. So you just fill in all this and hit next, hit next, agree, and you're all set. You've got your Google account. As I said, you probably already have one of these. Just wanted to show you how to set it up, super easy. Okay, next step, set up a Google Ads account. Super, again, super easy, super simple. Let's get into it. Hit start now. Now this may look different based on what country you're in. This is just what it looks like when you're in Australia. So I already have a bunch of different ad accounts. So for the purposes of this, let's create a new Google Ads account and it's gonna take you to AdWords Express. Don't go into this go experience with Google ads, click that, because otherwise it's gonna take you to the Google um, Express platform and that thing really, really sucks. <laughs> okay, so for the purposes of this, just leave this, don't bother. We're gonna come back to this when we actually set up a, a campaign. So create an account without a campaign. They're always just trying to get the ball rolling for you. If you wanna choose United States, choose United States. Choose your relevant time zone and the currency you want to operate in. So if you're doing US dollars, just select US dollars. Okay, so the account is set up. So guys, this is what the dashboard looks like. It's pretty simple. Nothing too crazy. We'll cover more of this when we actually get into uh, a bit of product research and also using the keyword planner and also when we set up our first campaign. So, but what I would make sure you do is go into billing and payments and set up all your billing details in here. Add your credit card, PayPal, whatever it is you're gonna to use to pay. So go through here, add everything that you need. Super simple, and then submit. This is the same section you're gonna be able to enter in the discount code that you get. So make sure you remember to add that in, guys. Okay, the next step, as I said, is setting up your Google Merchant Center account. So sign up. Okay, so here you're gonna select your country. So if it's United States, choose that. For the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna select Australia. What is the name of your store? I've made up a random one, just for the purpose of this. Shopping search. What's your website URL? I've made it just here. So if you wanna get updates or whatever, select that, but you can uncheck it. Yes, agree, continue. Uh, so it's gonna basically ask you to link it up and verify your store. So there's a few different ways to do this. If you've got Google Analytics, it's gonna be super easy. You're just gonna select that. Uh, or if you use Google Tag Manager, a bit more um, complex. We're just gonna, I'm gonna show you the way of actually adding it with the HTML tag. So we're gonna copy paste this and we're gonna head on over to your store. You're gonna click online store. You're gonna click here and you're gonna go edit code. Okay, so once you get here, you're gonna to wanna to put it into your store's theme liquid. So in here, you're gonna put it right underneath where it says head. So it should be the third line down. This might be slightly different depending on your theme, but just paste it in here. Click save, head on back over to this section here and then click verify URL. Now your website has been verified and it has been linked to your Google Merchant Center. Okay, verified and claimed, finish. Okay, so welcome to the Google Merchant Center. This is where you're gonna link your Shopify store with the Merchant Center, which is also gonna to link to your Google Ads account. And this is where you're gonna manage the products here. So you're gonna see here, eventually, once we submit products, whether or not they get approved, disapproved, and I'm gonna show you how to set up that feed. But before that, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to fill out all the relevant business information, tax, and shipping components, right? So all of this is here. You're gonna to wanna to add your business address. You're gonna to wanna to add your contact details. Now, depending on where you are, 
you're going to need to work out what your tax settings are going to be. So I recommend that you look up what you're required to pay. Um, but for now, just leave it as don't configure. And if you need to come and set it up, set it up. But work out whether or not you do need to based on where you are. So super important to set up shipping rates within here and the delivery zones. So to create one, I just call it free shipping. Handling time. Now, you're going to have to put... So depending what you are, your handling time. So order processing can be anywhere from one to, say, seven days. Transit time can be anywhere from, depending on what you're... If you're doing it within the US or not, two to 21 days. So you can do a minimum of order value. I don't put anything in there. Shipping rates. Create a single rate for all orders. So again, you're going to have to configure this depending on what you're doing. I'm just going to create a free shipping one, create a single rate for all orders, fixed rate, zero. Okay, continue. And done. So we've got a shipping rate. That's all set up. Make sure you save it. And yeah, so make sure this is all set up, guys. You're almost up and running. All we're going to do now is we're going to install an app that's going to link all your products to this merchant center. And using this app is going to be vital to your success. So let's head on back over to my PowerPoint and I'll talk you through why do you should use this app, how it's going to save you time, money, and most of all, energy. And Okay, so we're just going to head on back over to the presentation and I'm going to talk you through the next step, which is setting up the app. Okay, so setting up your product feed. Now that we've got the Merchant Center set up, I recommend you use the Google Shopping Feed app to set up the Google Merchant Feed and link it to your Shopify store. Now, this app is free for less than five products. This app's going to save you time. It's going to also come with a 21-day free trial for more than the five products. So make sure you use it, give it a try. It's going to be a lot easier than managing it through a spreadsheet. There are other apps. This is the one I use. It's very cheap. Just jump on it. It's going to save you time, money, energy. This is what it looks like here. It's called it's Google Shopping Feed by Simprosis uh, Media, just in the Shopify app store. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to set this up. Okay, just going to head back over to my Shopify store that I've set up. So just in the Shopify app store, I'll just quickly show you how to find it. Google Shopping. This is the one I use. It's cheap. It's got a lot of good reviews. The support team is fantastic. If you ever have any issues, the developer helps you out. And especially with diagnosing any issues you have with your feed, he's great. So chuck that into your store, install it, and I'll talk you through how to set it up. Okay, so now you have the app installed. Make sure you have at least some products uh, imported into your store. I've just imported one just for the purpose of this video. So let's head on in and go Google Shopping Feed. Okay, so let's click Continue Integration. Okay, so just make sure that you log in with the correct email address here. Then you're going to want to select the Merchant Center ID for the Merchant Center we just set up. Confirm your account. Now it's going to verify your domain in the Merchant Center and it's verified. Okay, so now we click the next step. Okay, so now we're going to want to sync uh, and set up all the different settings in the app. So it's going to have your published products, so however many you have. Now, I like to manage this a certain way. You don't have to manage it like this, but this is what I like to do. If you have, if you want to test all your products, then leave it to all products. I like to do something different where I go, let me choose the collection. I create a collection called Google Shopping. Okay, so you just need to create a collection and then I manage it with a tag. So I'll add to that product Google Shopping in the tag and then it'll automatically go into this collection here. So it'll just pop into the automated collection and from there, so what I'll do is, is I'll create a Google Shopping collection. So I'll go into products. So I'll go into collections and I'll create a collection. I'll name it Google Shopping. I go automated and product tag equals Google. So why I do this is I like to keep it separate and I don't want to test all my products. If I want to test all my products, I literally just select all products and move on from there. So next section in product titles, I like to use the search engine optimized title. So if I go into a product, go here and come down here, this is where you'll edit and it will pull from here. And why I like to do this 
is because if I want to have a different product title here to what is actually shown in Google Shopping. So I want to play around with the Google Shopping one, but I want this title to be as is because maybe I'm running it on Facebook as well and I want that title to be what comes up. I like to set it here so I can play around with that. But again, totally up to you. I just like to do that to keep it slightly separate and more tailored to Google Shopping style descriptions, which are slightly different to what is expected when someone comes on a landing page. So I keep the product description as the normal product description option, which is here. And I do that because the search engine optimized one doesn't give you enough room. There's not enough characters. If you come down here, 320 characters. So here you're able to put far, far more. So first variant, you can select whether you just have the first variant selected or all the variants. Now it totally depends on the product. If it's just a different size, mainly that you do, do first variant or you can select all variants. All it's gonna do is change how many things are uploaded to the feed. So if you have style, size, color, each one of those is gonna be a variant and each one of those are products you're gonna be spending money on. So just be careful with that and potentially just start off with the first variant. But again, depends on what you're selling. So next sections, just leave it, just leave it. Um, then you do have the option of also using a second image for product if it has no variant. So that's another way to have another image there. You can tick it, it's not gonna make a big difference. So if you have a niche store, you're gonna to wanna to set default settings of if you have an animal and pet supply store, just have that set. And what it's gonna do is every single product that comes in is gonna be set to that. Um, if you don't have SKUs, GTINs and all that, just submit product as a custom product. If your age group is always adult, if your gender is always male, this just allows you to not have to do these next steps here and saves you a bit of time, but it's probably only going to be for niche stores. Okay, so in the next section, yes, my products are including tax VAT or no, select whatever's relevant to you. So sale price, so if you don't tick this, it's just going to show the compare at price or your normal sales price as the price on there. If you do this, it's going to come up with kind of a discount. So totally up to you guys. Again, whatever's relevant to you, I leave it unchecked. Um, if you're not using UTM tags, this isn't going to matter. If you are, tick it. For here, just leave it as global format. So if you do have Bing, here's another chance to set it up. Otherwise, skip. And now we're going to sync products. What this is going to do, it's going to sync your store, the app, and the Merchant Center together. Now, if you don't have a niche store, what you're gonna to need to do is you need to give Google what product category and who this product is for. So Google uses, for shopping, uses a bunch of different categories to group products, just like, I guess, a bit like an Amazon within its shopping platform. And you need to inform Google what is the most relevant section to put it in and who is it for. So if you click on the product, now, I showed you before, if you have a niche store, you can do this in mass, and you can also filter by different things and do it, but if you need to do it individually because the products are so different, click into it and go category. Now, this lamp here is, here we go. So I typed in lamp, it's a lamp, but now we wanna find the most relevant one. So is it a home and garden lightning, uh, lighting lamp? Or is it light therapy, lampshades? Which one does it fit in that best, sorry, which one is the most relevant to it? So in this instance, so the most relevant one here seems to be the top one, home garden, lighting, lamps. Now, you need to get that as specific as possible because the more specific you are, the more likely your ad is gonna be shown to relevant people and lead to sales and better ad ranks within Google. Condition is gonna be new, gender, unisex. If, you've got, if you're selling products for women, then it's female. Products for men, male. For kids, newborns, whatever it is, select the age group. Most of yours, I imagine, are gonna be adult. Identifier, custom product. You, unless you have GTINs and barcodes and SKUs, select that. Update product. And it's now all done. Go back to manage products and you'll see the category here. Now, if you wanna filter by certain products, select the filter. And it is in this way that you can 
select multiple products and do edits in bulk. See, you can assign age groups, cut, all of these things that I just showed you, you can assign them in bulk. So that's that guys, and make sure you're relevant with this as it is quite important. Now for your merchant center fee to be approved, it can take five to seven days. So be patient. Once it's set up and ready to go, you can move on to the next steps. Now, I hope this has really helped guys. You're now set up once the feed is approved to start up your first campaign. The next step I will take you through though is conversion tracking in the next video. I hope you found some use in this. Let me know if you have any questions and happy Google shopping dropshipping guys. Thanks so much.